Hi, my name is Pascal and welcome to the Aristides factory here in Harlem, the Netherlands, where we make these beautiful guitars. Uh, we have our 010 model, which you can see over there, our 020 model, our 070 model, this orange thing I'm holding right here, uh, the 050 base and our latest addition to our line of products, the Aristides 060 six string. What we're going to do today is show you exactly how we build these instruments. We get a lot of questions, a lot of emails from people who ask, okay, what the hell are you doing over there? And what we're going to do today is take you to, through the whole process and show you everything. Our production manager, Eric, who will be with you in a minute, will show you everything. And uh, all I can say is uh, enjoy. Hi, my name is Eric. I'm the production manager of Aristides Instruments in Holland. I will take you on a tour to the in the factory of uh, Aristides. First, we start uh, in our uh, laminating room where we produce the bases of the guitars. So the process is completely different than uh, the production of wooden guitars. Our guitars are made from a uh, combination of a arium core material with a constructional skin, and I will show you how we do that. So here, I just opened the uh, aluminum mold, uh, which we use for the production of the uh, 050 bass guitar. Uh, for every guitar model, we uh, make a different mold. During the day, one person uh, starts working on uh, building up the skin. That means layer for layer, we build up uh, the layer which is later on is being sanded for the finishing. Then we use uh, different kinds of materials to uh, stiffen the guitar. Uh, especially the neck is, for example, uh, made more stiff by using uh, unidirectional uh, carbon fiber. Uh, at the end of the day, the two uh, halves of the guitar uh, are glued together. So we close the mold and we create a uh, one piece construction, so this is body and neck together, and it's hollow. That's when the arium comes in, uh, literally, because we uh, make the arium uh, separately and we inject it, inject it into the guitar as a fluid. Uh, it will connect the two parts of the guitar and it will harden, and in the end uh, you have a complete guitar, body and neck combined, stiff at the places where it needs to be. This process takes almost a day for one guitar, uh, during the night we let it harden and uh, afterwards it will be cured in an oven in different cure cycles, different temperatures and only then the guitar is uh, as a base usable for the rest of the production. First let me tell you a bit about the arium material which is the core of the guitar. It's, it's a combination of, of resins uh, and solid uh, materials. So we wanted to produce guitars which are uh, made in one piece, easily playable, uh, really nice with the stain, really nice uh, in sound, uh, in clearness, uh, good definition, but also uh, a nice character of tone. So not that it's, it's a cold tone, it needs to have some warmth in it. So all these material properties we put in the arium, uh, which is made separately again and injected into the hollow guitar and that makes it as a complete guitar. This was the 050 mold, aluminum. Here we have the 010 mold in different kinds of colors. Um, you can ag again see that the uh, guitar, all guitars are made out of one piece, uh, different kinds of inserts, these are molds um, made for the 060 and the 070. These molds are made differently. They are actually uh, production molds for the first series to test and to check the guitars, uh, to have the first series of uh, 50, for example, check the guitars, uh, evaluate the guitars when it comes to playability, neck profiles. Uh, you must understand that once we're going to make an aluminum mold, we have to invest a lot of money. So we need to be sure, sure about the guitar and its uh, geometry, 
its playability uh, and the way it works, the way it sounds. So here you can uh, roughly see different kinds of, of resins. Uh, this is where the magic happens. This is where the arium is uh, mixed. Um, separate room, can't tell you too much about it, of course. But we mix the arium here, it's fluid. We take it over here. We uh, pour the arium into a, uh, a big pot uh, with the right volume. Um, we connect it to, to the guitar, to the mold. And under a low pressure, we push the, uh, the core material into the guitar and then let it stand for a complete night. Once the guitar is in the mold, completely filled with arium, uh, we let it stand for a night. Uh, the next day we will open the mold, get out the guitar, we will check on uh, surface finishes, uh, we will check uh, how the gluing uh, was made, uh, we will check the weight and several kinds, are check, uh, several kinds of checks are made to be sure that the base of the guitar is perfect. So this is actually a quite complex cross section because it's the O and O guitar with several holes drilled in it. Um, here you can see the uh, core material, it's the white material which is the arium. You see the outer layer which is the construction of skin. Um, and you can see that the upper part of the guitar and the lower part of the guitar are connected uh, around the guitar, of course, and later on they are connected through the arium. The arium itself is made uh, specifically for the sound properties, but of course it's a combination of the core material and the outer layer. So the arium material, if we would make a guitar purely out of arium, it would be too uh, brittle, uh, it's not stiff enough. Um, it can break, it's not easy to paint. Uh, and of course we need several kinds of um, areas in, in the guitar uh, due to vibration or holes need to be drilled or uh, milling programs which we use. Uh, we need the guitar to be uh, more hard at certain places than the arium actually is. So we need an outer layer, a construction skin we say, and a core material of Arium. So here we are in our uh, uh, paint booth, which we build ourselves. Uh, we developed this uh, tool, which is actually in the testing phase, and we wanted to have something really flexible for the uh, painter to paint in a horizontal position. It's uh, made flexible uh, so that we can um, we can use this tool for a very long bass guitar uh, uh, and of course our smallest guitar, that's for example the uh, O2O guitar, we can adjust it, put the O2O guitar in it, see uh, which kind of position we need and spray. So it needs a bit of finishing but we're getting there. Um, this was mainly uh, a summary of what we do in the laminating room and now we'll take you to the uh, room uh, which is, which is uh, used for the next step uh, means gluing the fretboard, uh, doing the, the fretboard work, uh, pearl inlays, uh, fret pressing. So uh, we're going to room number two. Alright, so here we are at the uh, second uh, production room. This is the room where we take all the bodies. Uh, of which I told you uh, just previously. Um, and here the bodies are prepared for the, uh, the painting uh, process. You see different kinds of bodies which are uh, cured and checked. Uh, checked uh, on the uh, surface quality, uh, checked on the weight. For example, this is one of the latest 070s. Um, so ready for a, a milling process. That means that if a customer uh, decides to order a guitar, uh, especially when it comes to the 060 and the 070, you can choose for different kinds of fretboards, different kinds of uh, uh, knobs, electronic configurations, uh, different kinds of elements. So when an order comes in, uh, we make sure that all custom wishes are 
uh, milled into the guitar. So after we have the, um, the bodies uh, finished and checked, um, we decide what kind of uh, fretboard it needs. So for example, this is a 060 fretboard, it's ebony wood, uh, pearl inlay, uh, with a compound radius, um, um, normal side dots, uh, but it could happen that a customer decides to want uh, loom inlays or different kinds of pearl. We make several different kinds of tools to, um, to make the right fretboards. For example, these kinds of tools, just easy clamps, for some drilling, drilling of the side holes. These days we make the fretboards uh, by hand uh, when it comes to the uh, first production series. Uh, later on we can decide to make uh, the fretboards with a uh, CNC milling program to have the right compound radius. Over here we've got different kinds of wood. So these are uh, fretboards of the 020, the 060. Uh, these are standard 060s. Um, this is rosewood, this is ebony. Um, maybe you can see these are CNC milled. So you see the uh, milling program back into the wood. Uh, these days we make uh, the frets, fret slots uh, blind, we say. So they don't run through and through, but we got to um, the frets not thrown through, so that means uh, less problems with winter frets, uh, which is a big advantage, we think. A lot of people ask why we still use wood as a fretboard. Um, and the reason why we use wood at the moment <coughs> is that uh, when you talk about um, the <laughs> <laughs> when, when we talk about the, uh, the way a guitar works uh, in terms of uh, tonal properties uh, but also in terms of uh, uh, pressing the frets, uh, maybe do a refret, uh, these are all matters we take into account. And uh, if you talk for example about refretting, we want uh, our guitars to be suitable for a refret later on, if necessary. Uh, it's a good time to tell you about the uh, fret wires we use. We use uh, Yeska fret wire, um, a nickel silver, but also stainless steel. So uh, normally, depends on the playing style, but normally a nickel silver uh, fret wire will um, will need to be refretted uh, earlier than a stainless steel. But for example, if you put the uh, nickel silver in it, and after a few years you want a uh, refret, uh, then a wooden fretboard is just simpler, more simple to, to do a refret and to do a resanding than for example a uh, complete carbon fiber neck. At least uh, we did a lot of tests with it and we still think uh, at the moment uh, the wood is the best option. Although uh, I can tell you that uh, our uh, ideas about using different kinds of materials are always there. So um, who knows, in the future we find a different kind of material which sounds equally as good, uh, also gives a bit of um, freedom in choice for the customer in different kinds of sounds, but it needs to be able to be uh, refretted as well. It's good to tell you a bit more about the uh, process of gluing. Um, before we put the fretboard onto the guitar, uh, we make sure that the uh, gluing surface is completely straight. Uh, we make sure that it's straight on these kinds of tools which are developed uh, by ourselves. Um, we actually position the guitar always on the same way so that the neck is always straight above the tool. So, cannot move. It's fixed, and now we can adjust the, the neck with the supports, do the sanding uh, when we have a fixed bridge. Um, we let the guitar as it is. If we have a Floyd Rose bridge, we, we sand off this part of the uh, headstock, 
and we use a different kind of fretboard. For example, this is a fretboard for the float rows so that we can put the locking nut on. It's sanded and glued onto the guitar. The necks are, are pretty straight when it comes out of the mold, but every gluing surface needs to be sanded for a good connection of the glue and the wood. We use these kinds of tools, uh, which actually uh, causes a bit of a pretension uh, when the fretboard is glued onto the guitar. In the end, it's all a, um, a calculation of, of, of uh, the pretension, the wood, um, the uh, tension of the strings, uh, the tension of the truss rod. So we need to take all these uh, matters into account to have the, the perfectly playable guitar in the end. So this is why we have this slightly pretension tool. Uh, when the fretboard is on, we uh, use uh, our own developed molds to do a custom, uh, custom milling of the uh, electronic configurations, the elements, uh, the pickups, I mean, sorry. I will show you that. So, uh, let me see. Here we got all kinds of different molds, um, which we use for the uh, 070 guitar. So we developed this, this mold, um, which is really suitable for uh, custom options because it's actually a kind of a Lego system. Because of the uh, trapezium uh, shape, it's always fixed on the right place and we can move different kinds of parts uh, in this in this, uh, let's say, mother mold. So like a Lego system, we can put different kinds of pieces in here and we can do the milling. We can switch things around. Um, it's very flexible for the, the work we do. So every type of guitar has got its own uh, drawer with different kinds of molds. Here's the 060, the flexible mold of the 060. Same principle though. So, I will just um, run through this uh, rack of guitars, uh, which uh, contains different kinds of uh, guitars in different kinds of stages. Um, if you take the first, this is a 060 guitar with a uh, custom fretboard. So this customer only wanted the uh, 060 logo on the 12th fret, 12th position. Um, so here we can see what kind of guitar it is. It's an extra lightweight guitar actually. Uh, it's going to have stain stainless steel frets. Only 060 logo. Uh, if I take the following, the, the follow guitar, you can see that um, it's already fretted. Here you can see that the blind fret slots uh, give a really nice uh, finishing. So it's like a binding, but it's just one complete piece of ebony. So we don't have the problems with winter frets. It's never sharp. It's always, always a good fretboard. Here you see the milling, two, uh, two humbuckers. Uh, we put in a uh, hip shot hardtail bridge, the thick one. Um, there's a small cavity for a uh, custom tone block, so we connect the bridge uh, to the tone block with uh, the arium core material in between, so it's like a sandwich construction. Uh, we figured out this uh, system ourselves, and we tested it, and it's just got a great tone. We use stainless steel tone block, but we can also make this from uh, aluminum or brass or what kind of material you like. They all have, uh, of course, effects on the tone. Uh, mainly we produce with the uh, stainless steel. We're going to make one of aluminum because of the uh, custom wish to have a very lightweight guitar. Um, 
But it's good to see that um, the milling process is over, except for the, the custom controls. And here you can see again the layers of uh, the construction of skin, and inside you see the white material, which is the arium. So these, uh, this float rose cavity is uh, reinforced with a piece of carbon fiber so that the guitar can deal with all the tension which comes into the uh, float rose bridge and uh, makes it really uh, solid and good uh, for the tone as well. So that means different kinds of uh, milling molds uh, which you saw earlier. Just to finish the process, um, here we have our fret press. Very robust uh, fret press to press all the Jeska fret wire in really well. Um, what can we say? We use the compound radius. <laughs> we use the compound radius. So that means uh, a lot of uh, press coils and uh, a, lot of, a lot of focus needs to be uh, on the fretboard when you press the frets in. We, we really focus on the quality of the fretboard. So that means that all the uh, fret slots need to be uh, clean, uh, deep enough. Uh, we use the blind, the, the blind fret slots, uh, good fret wire, good, good barbs, really sharp, so that everything sticks to the, uh, the fretboard well. That's about it, I think. Let's go to the next room. All right, so here we are in the uh, third room, the uh, assembly room and the uh, fret leveling room. Um, so we have this uh, guitar uh, completely prepared for the painter. So for example, the guitars that are uh, finished, hand sanded, all prepared for the paint shop, they're over here. Here we have the 060s uh, made to custom order, the 070s made to custom orders. Uh, above we have the 010s and on the other side we have the 020 guitars. Um, they are completely hand sanded with uh, special sanding tools to, to follow, the, follow the, the, the difficult curves we have. Different, different, difficult, uh, and different kinds of details in the guitar. Um, so it's hand sanded to make sure that everything is completely smooth. All radius are good. Uh, of course, the, the mold uh, provides us with a, uh, a well-shaped guitar, but all finishes are still hand sanded. So right now we use a. A uh, other company to paint the guitars. Uh, in the future, we'll do, do that ourselves, as, as I said in room number one. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, painted guitars, which are uh, finished right now. So, this is a nearly finished 060 gu guitar, uh, completely customized, uh, no logos on the fretboard, uh, ebony fretboard. Um, these are uh, bare knuckle pickups, uh, black hip shot, hardtail, custom knobs, custom configuration actually as well. Here you can see the back side of the guitar. Um, you can see the, the tone block uh, which we discussed earlier. Uh, this is again uh, stainless steel connected to the uh, hip shot hardtail with a bit of air in in between, like a sandwich construction. Over here we have a very interesting guitar. <laughs> this is also a, um, yeah, a, a real custom made guitar, EMG pickups uh, from the Twin series, uh, Twin X. Uh, Hipshot Hardtail Chrome, Chrome hardware. We're finishing the electronics. Uh, still working on that one, actually. So, um, and the other thing which is, uh, Pretty nice on this guitar is the uh, uh, the chrome binding. It's underneath the matte finish, so it's painted black with a chrome binding with a matte finish on top, all the way to the headstock as well. This is what we call the Dutch orange, which we normally use for the uh, 060 and the 070 guitar. Uh, this is a test to to try the same color on the uh, 020. We call this Dutch orange. It's actually a um, 
a complicated orange with a bit of a pearl and a metallic underneath, underneath a matte uh, top coat. Uh, rosewood fretboard and um, yeah, this is the O2O, it's a short scale uh, guitar, our shortest one. We got a high gloss white 070 in production over here. Also with the same construction uh, with the uh, stainless steel tone block. And before I will tell you a bit about the fret leveling we do and the um, amount of time and energy we put into the, the finishing quality, the, fi the quality of the, of the finishing of the guitars, I will just uh, run you through the uh, hardware components. Uh, we use the uh, MEC uh, potentiometers, uh, different kinds of values of course for uh, passive and active electronics. We use um, the Schaller electronics for the uh, mega switch. Uh, we find them very good quality, German quality. All hardware are actually evaluated in-house and uh, after a lot of evaluation we chose for just certain suppliers to uh, maintain the right quality of the guitars. Um, if we talk about tuners for example, we really like the hipshot tuners, uh, hipshot locking tuners, open because we like them real simple and clean. We have our custom made tone block. Uh, like I said previously, we can also make this in alum aluminum, uh, brass, you name it. We also use, um, we mainly use hipshot hardware when it comes to bridges. So these are the hipshot, uh, hipshot. <laughs> these, these, are, these are the hipshot uh, hardtail bridges for the six string. And we use Canadian leather for our straps with the Aristides logo on it. Floyd Rose. Um, a lot of people want the Floyd Rose on the bridge, um, so we do that. Of course we also have the switches, the toggles from MEC. Um, we have to knock on wood, but they, uh, with all the years of experience, they never broke down. So really good quality. Uh, the jack inputs are also from MEC, so mainly it's MEC. Uh, Schaller components, uh, Hipshot and Floyd Rose. Here you see all the different kinds of um, pickups. We have the EMGs underneath. We use them a, a lot in gold. We have the uh, Seymour Duncans, uh, the Blackouts. Uh, we have the Pegasus Sentient uh, combination. Um, we use the uh, TB5 and the TB4, uh, as well as the TB11. So we got the, uh, for example, the Seymour Duncans, the uh, jazz models. Uh, we got the um, juggernauts of bare knuckle. Seymour Duncan, bare knuckle, uh, EMG, mostly, mostly installed in our guitars. Here you have a, a good view on the, the back side of the guitar. Uh, pretty much an open uh, cavity on, on the back side, so the back plate is, is covering this. It's pretty big, uh, a lot of space around. Uh, this is all uh, a lot of experience. Um, of course we need the uh, cavities for the electronics, uh, the spring cavities as well, but we also experience that it's got a great effect on the tone, it's really resonant, the guitar is really resonant and clear uh, due to the arium. But also the uh, geometry causes the, uh, the right tone we want. So the process is as follows, um, when we have um, inspected the guitar, so all the paint job is, is done well, uh, we start assembling the guitar, uh, put everything on the guitar, uh, electronics, uh, hardware, uh, pickups. We uh, give the guitar a bit of a rest during the night and later on we will start uh, leveling the frets and uh, crowning the frets, uh, polishing um, and in the end of course finish the guitar by cleaning up. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a bit about the fret leveling we do. Um, we actually use the same kind of 
tool or jig like you uh, saw in the previous room. So what we do is we take the guitar, um, it's assembled already, strings on, uh, we straighten the neck, put the guitar on, we make sure that we measure the, the way the neck reacts on the string tension and after that and after knowing what the, the clocks say, we take off the strings, the neck will uh, bend back, we pull it again towards the supports, we make sure the clocks are again on zero so that the neck is still straight the way it was with the string tension and after that we uh, send the we hand sand the guitar, we level the frets in the compound radius, we check and check this again, start crowning, uh, st start dressing, uh, polishing, make sure that the frets have no sharp edges, it plays really smooth, it feels really smooth and uh, in the end we polish and polish again to make sure that it's just neat and shiny. After that we uh, start finishing the guitar by making a custom nut. We use a GravTech a black tusk nut. So that's really the finishing of the guitar. Uh, once it's finished, uh, we play the guitar, uh, check the guitar uh, for a uh, third, fourth, fifth time. And when it's completely set up right towards, uh, to the customer wishes, cleaning up, put it in a case, uh, we put in all the side stuff, the accessories like the, the straps, uh, the right Allen keys and we uh, finish the guitar and send it away. So thank you very much for watching and listening to my long story about the Aristides factory. Thank you very much.